People worry a lot. Marami mga tao na uubos ang energy worrying. And we can never preach enough, teach enough against worry. People still worry. What do you worry about? Ano mga number one sa listahan natin? Getting sick, becoming poor, remaining poor perhaps, losing your job, losing in your business, not winning, growing old, or figuring in so-called accidents, etc., etc. Maraming worries ang mga tao. Kaya ang ating teaching ngayon, again, don't worry. Paulit-ulit kasi, pero nag-worry pa rin. So, nawa, mabawasan ang konti ang worrying natin malang. Kauulit na mga teaching sa Bible. Dear God, we thank you that you are a God that we can trust. We entrust this uh, event to you, Father, that you may be our speaker. Lead us so we may know your truth and your truth will set us free. Heal our illness that is called being a warrior. And right now, fathers, we ask you to cleanse us. Patawarin niyo po kami sa mga kasalanan namin. Restore us, cleanse us, so we can hear your word powerfully, beautifully, and change our lives to be more and more like your son, Jesus. So be our speaker. Lead us unto greater godliness. Give us your peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our son, our Lord, we pray with thanksgiving. What are the major teachings of Scripture about worry? First of all, don't worry. It's a commandment. Matthew 6.25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. It is useless to worry. Matthew 6.27, Can any one of you by worrying add a single R to your life? The obvious answer is no one. We cannot un- add a single R to our life. We cannot make one hair black or white or anything by worrying. But yet, many people still waste a lot of energy worrying. Let's take a look at the Lord's example. Matthew 8, 23-24, when there was every reason to worry, after Jesus left in a boat with his, after Jesus left in a boat with his disciples, a terrible storm suddenly struck the lake. A reason to worry. And waves started splashing into their boat. Jesus was sound asleep. Napakalinaw ng example na to. Lahat na lang pwede mong ipag-alala, pwede mo nang maging reason, mag Because there was a storm, the boat could sink, you could lose your life. But there Jesus was sleeping. No worries. How about the negative example of this uh, workaholic Martha? Luke 10, 40-42. Martha was worried about all that had to be done. Finally, she went to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it bother you that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to come and help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about so many things. But only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen what is best and it will not be taken away from her. We know the background that the Lord was teaching in the living room, receiving room. Martha was in the kitchen preparing food for everybody present there in their house. And her sister was there seated with the men learning from Jesus. And Martha was worried that the food might not be ready, there might not be enough dishes, this and that. But the Lord says it was a needless and an unnecessary concern. He said, you're so worried about the food, about the preparation, about the table being set. But I tell you, what is not important 5,000 years from now, it's not important. And 5,000 years from now, will it matter if there was really enough food, if the setting was right? What really matters 5,000 years from now is you learn something for eternity. You learn something from the mouth of the Master, the Lord. And the Lord said, that will not be taken away from Mary. She has chosen the better thing. That which has lasting importance. So, ano mga pinag-aalala natin? Kung masyadong time-bound yung mga pinag-aalala natin, dilipas din yung panahon. Matatapos din, makakalimutan din ng mga tao how you looked, what you served, what you did. But what's important that you really be focused on are eternal things, things that pertain to our spirit, to our well-being, to our relationship with God. Don't think about worrisome ideas. Yung mga nakakapag-alala ka. To think is to be in the realm of thought, in the imagination, and sometimes the untrue. 
hindi lahat naman ang iniisip natin, totoo. Pero pag inisip mo na, totoo na sa'yo. Matthew 14, 25-26, A little while before morning, Jesus came walking on the water towards His disciples. When they saw Him, they thought He was a ghost. They were terrified and started screaming. Again, we know the background. The Lord Jesus set His disciples ahead. They boarded a boat, went rowing across the lake to get to the other side. But in the middle of it all, another storm brewed, another storm developed, and they were having a very difficult time rowing against the wind. Kung hindi pa kasya na sila, ipagod na pagod, hirap na hirap, at natatakot ding lumubog, suddenly Jesus was walking on the water, in, in all that darkness, they could not recognize him. They thought he was a ghost. Remember, they thought he was a ghost. He was not a ghost. But what was the effect? They were terrified and started screaming as if what they thought was correct and was true. Pag iniisip mo kasi, walang filter yung mind mo kung iniisip mo tama o hindi. Therefore, tatablan ka na nun as tama. So they think of a worrisome idea, therefore they get terrified. And all along, mali naman sila. Gano karami ang iniisip niyo mga kapatid na nag na kayo, natakot na kayo, naubusan na kayo ng energy, pero hindi man pala totoo. Yung mga nagsiselos ka, yung hindi sumasagot sa text, no? si Papa. Naku, may kasama na siguro ito, blam blam blam, yun naman pala, low bat lang yung tao. Yung ganito at ganun, hindi sumasagot si anak, nagwa-worry ka na, baka na-rape, baka na-kidnap. Yun naman pala, nasa bag lang niya yung cellphone at bising busy siya katatawa, hindi niya nadidinig na yung phone nagre-ring. And yet, you invent many ideas and you create a world of illusion in your mind. Nevertheless, your heartbeat increases, your blood pressure rises, and you're about to have a heart attack, and all of it is just what you think. Kaya dapat kinokontrol lang isip. It's not even real, but it could already affect you. Because what you think of, whether you like it or not, if you give it a space in your mind, becomes your reality. It is your reality. Gusto mong problemahin yung ulan? Reality yung mo yun. Namo problema ka tuwing uulan. Gusto mong mag-enjoy pag umuulan? Tuwing umuulan, nag-enjoy ka. So the same rain has a very different effect on two different people because of what you think about it. What do you think about life? What do you think about a hard day's work? What do you think about getting busy? What do you think about the traffic? What do you think about your strict mother? What you think will oppress you? Matthew 14, 27 to 28, At once, Jesus said to them, Don't worry, I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you on the water. So para nalang matahimik yung takot nila, sabi, huwag kayong matakot, ako si Jesus. Don't be afraid. Sabi naman ito si Peter, kung talagang kayo yan, it means you have the power, you can also empower me, you're walking on the water, ask me to do the same, I want to walk towards you. So they think of Jesus and they relax. The same apparition, the same appearance, the same personality, but when they thought, when their thought about Him changed, their whole attitude changed and they relaxed. And Peter would even dare to want to walk on the water. From a very scared person kanina, ngayon a very daring person just because nagpalit siya ng iniisip about who that man was that was walking on the water. What's on your mind could scare you. It could also pacify you, even inspire you. Peter you now even likes to walk on the water too. Can you imagine how much change happened just because they changed their mind about who that person was? Now, Matthew 14, 29, Come on, Jesus said. Peter then got out of the boat and started walking on the water toward him. Because Peter thought it was Jesus and Peter thought that Jesus was powerful and Peter thought that Jesus was going to extend that power to him. Now look at him. He was walking on water and all he did was think about it. Peter thinks of walking on water and then he actually does. Your thought is your reality. You are your thoughts. Pag miserable ang buhay mo, pag sa mga miserable ang buhay ito, excuse me, hindi miserable ang buhay ko. 
Di ba? Miserable ka lang kasi ginagawa mo miserable. Masira na ang araw na to. Maybe ang araw mo, but not mine. Kasi yan ang iniisip mo. No? Pagka sinabi mo, I want out of this wedding. It is marriage. The other person says, oh, I want to stay in. So, ano ang attitude mo tungkol doon? Kung ikaw malulungkutin because you think of sad thoughts. Kung ikaw laging sumasabit sa mga aksidente because probably you have very adventurous ideas about how you should travel. What do you think? How do you think? So, itong Pedro na to, inisip niyang maglalakad siya, naglakad nga. Matthew 14, 30. But when Peter saw how strong the wind was, he was afraid and started sinking. O nagpalit siya ng iniisip. Kanina, iniisip niya si Jesus, powerful and he can allow me to walk on water. He walked. Now, naalala niya yung wave. Ay, tubig nga pala to, nakakalubog to, di ba? Lubog siya. What you think happens to you? Peter thinks of sinking and he starts sinking. His thoughts scare him. His thoughts made him sink. Kaya lang kaya natin maintindihan yung sinasabi yung mind over matter. Because we are so obsessed with the physical world. And the more and more obsessed we are with the physicality of everything, the less and less we will enjoy what it means to believe it and it will happen. Save me, Lord, he shouted. So naalala niya si Lord. At nung naalala niya si Lord, sinagipit naman siya. So anong naalala mo? Anong iisipin mo? Siyempre, warped challenge naman yung sige nga, kung may faith ka, walk on water. Misa may mga ganun mga pilosopo. Gusto mo sana ng pagbigyan, magwawalk ka nga, pero natatakot ka namang lumubog. So siyempre, hindi mo gagawin. Ano? But this, the context is not the same. Jesus was there. It was the age of miracles. This was Peter, who the Lord was trying to really empower and to understand who Jesus was and what Jesus could do. This was a very special period. Not everybody who says, I have faith can walk on water because what's the necessity? Hindi naman talaga kailangan at hindi naman kailangan i-prove na ngayon kung sino si Jesus, proven na. So yung mga ganun kami sa mga challenge, hindi ba dapat ina-entertain at hindi dapat pinapatulan. Magkaiba yung realm of IQ ng ganun klaseng mga challenges. Matthew 14.31 Right away, Jesus reached out His hand. He helped Peter up and said, You surely don't have much faith. Why do you doubt? So may faith naman, nakalakad nga, pero hindi masyado, kaya lumubo. Konti lang yung faith niya. Konti lang din ang na-achieve. Kung hindi siya tumingin dun sa mga waves, hindi siya nagpadala sa takot, he would have walked all the way to Jesus and probably back to the boat. Peter thinks of Jesus again, and he is saved. Dahil sabi niya, Lord, save me. Inisip niya, hiniling niya, nangyari. It's just and only a thought. Napaka-importante, what do you think of? Because it's just a matter of not thinking about it or it's just a matter of focusing on it and what you think of happens. What you forget, forget. is forgotten. Kita niyo yung mga young people, hindi masyadong warrior. Older people are more prone to worry. But they have the same life. Yung anak mo, papayagan mong pumunta sa isang outing, pero si magulang, worry ng worry. Si anak naman, enjoy ng enjoy. Magkaiba kasi sila na iniisip. Ang mga bata kasi have no idea of danger because they have not encountered so many dangers yet. They have no idea of pain because they have not encountered much pain yet. So hanggang hindi nila nararanasan yun, hindi sila magiging aware. And parents, supposedly because of the longer life that they have been living on earth, have been exposed to more pain. Therefore, they are more prone to worry. Mas marami na silang nakitang motorsiklong tumumba, marami na silang taong nasagasaan ng tren, marami na silang nakitang taong binangungot, nahulog, kung ano-ano. So, mas marami na silang ngayong memory of fear na mas madaling ma-recall. Kaya, magkaiba ang iniisip. But what do you do about this? Totoo naman, may mga pangit na nangyayari sa buhay. Meron din maganda. But what do you do? You think of worthwhile ideas. Ano ba ang maganda at masarap isipin? Yun ang isipin mo. May mahal ka sa buhay? 
Sumakay sa airplane, anong lagi laman ng utak mo? Kinakalog yun ng hangin. No? Nagkaroon ng ipo-ipo. Inabot yun ng mga masasamang hangin, nakikikidlat. At yung airplane niya, nagsasishik na ganyan sa hangin. O isipin mong, natutulog siya, kumakain siya, may masarap na isinaserve na pagkain. At ini-imagine mo yung landing niya. Anong ini-imagine mo? Kasi kung anong ini-imagine mo, yun ang tatalab sa iyong katawan at sa iyong lifestyle. Philippians 4.8 tells us what to think of. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. Pag iniisip mong iyong asawa, are you thinking of what is worthwhile and worthy of praise tungkol sa kanya or what is worthy of complaining about? Pag lagi mong iniisip what is worthy of complaining about, you will wake up one day and you want legal separation or wish for a divorce. Pero pag lagi mong iniisip yung what is truly worthwhile and nice about the person, ito yung uuwi, mas mahal mo siya, mas namiss mo, mas sweet ka. Kasi ang iniisip mo yung good. Now, inside everybody, there's some bad and there's some good. What do you think of? Kaya kung bisan magtataka ka, may taong inis na inis ka, pero may in love din sa kanya. Ha? Kasi yung taong in love sa kanya, ang iniisip yung lovable qualities niya. Ikaw na iinis sa kanya, ang iniisip mo kasi yung nakakainis na qualities. It's the same person magkakaibang thoughts. So what you think of affects you. Kaya yung mga taong naniniwalang gagaling sila pag may sakit, mas malaki at mas mabilis ang paggaling nila. Yung mga taong hindi naniniwala sa serile nilang doktor, nung dumating yung doktor, mukha namang mamamatay na tong doktor na to. Yung wala kang paniniwala sa kanya, halos ayaw kang tabla nung yung mga reseta niya sa'yo. Kasi yung palang iniisip mo na eh. What you think of could even materialize. What you think of could transfer from the realm of thought to the physical world. This is the power of thought, and some people call it the power of prayer. Sabi ni Lord, you know, believe that you will receive it, and you will. Matthew 7, 7, ask, and you will receive. Bantayan nyo yung progression ng thought. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Balik tarin nyo. What you receive is what you have been asking for. Pero bakit ako natagal sa trabaho ko? I'm not asking for it, no? But your body language has been asking for it. Lagi kang late, lagi kang incompetent, hindi maganda ang mga trabaho mo. Your body language is asking for the company to remove you. What you find is what you have been searching for. Why? Why? This is my partner. That's what you've been searching for. Whether you were aware of it or not, that's what you find because that's what you search for. And then, why? 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 When you ask, ba? you think what to ask for. When you search, you think what you search for. And when you knock, you think where you will knock and how you will knock. Therefore, this asking, searching, and knocking is really thinking. And thinking is praying. If there is any part of our anatomy that connects to the divine, it is our brain. It is not really the heart because when you look at the heart, it's really a mass of tissues and muscles. It's the brain. You connect to the divine, you connect to the universe, you connect to God through thoughts, through prayer. Prayer equals asking, and asking means receiving. If thinking is praying, so think about it. What you're having is what you have been praying for, whether you were aware of it or not. So mayroong isang babaeng na-rape. O bakit siya na-rape? I'm not asking for it. Naglalakad ka ng dis oras ng gabi. Diyan sa madilim na kalye na yan. Don't you think that your body language is asking for it? O kahit lalaki ka pa, nare-rape na rin. Diba? Ba't ka nakakalat dyan? Bakit ka nasa ganitong lugar? You are asking for it. So, I did not. You were asking for it except that you have been deceived not to be aware that you're asking for it. Okay, it's a battle of thoughts. It's a battle for our mind. You must be aware of what crosses your mind because what crosses your mind becomes prayer, whether or not you say Amen at the end of it. 
Nagiging miserable ka dahil yun ang ina-attract mo sa buhay mo. What you receive is what you ask for. What you find is what you seek. What you knock on is what opens to you. What you think of becomes your life. Kaya magtataka ka. Magkakapatid, lumaki sa isang bahay, pare-pareho ng kinakain. Sometimes they even go to the same school. They receive the same allowance, etc., etc. Pero later on, iba-iba yung mga buhay nila. You know why? Kasi iba-iba silang mag-isip. Iba-iba silang mag-pray if you're going to equip, equate thinking with prayer. Does a prayer have to end with an amen for it to be considered a prayer? When it's in your thought, it connects to all the energies and all the powers in creation and the thought attracts it all. Your reality now, your present life, what you have, what you are, your world is simply the product of your thoughts. Call it your prayers. They are answer to your prayers. Nagkaroon ka na kung ano-ano mga sakit. I don't deserve this. I don't like it. Ano man sakit? Sakit mo. Nagkaroon ako ng sakit sa lungs. Bakit? Nung malaman nila, ang dami pa lang na-inhale ng mga, mga, mga masasamang usok. I did not ask for it. But where was your body? Where was your lung? Where were your lungs to receive those? So, it, it becomes a body language. It becomes a language by itself. It becomes a wish. It becomes a prayer. So, wag natin sisihin ang Diyos. Huwag natin sisihin ang mga magulang natin. Huwag natin sisihin yung ating mga jeans. Huwag natin sisihin si Magellan, ang mga kamikaze pilots. You are like that because you think like that. Kaya may mga taong burara ang buhay kasi burara ang mag-isip. May mga taong pupunta na sa pupuntahan, nakarating na doon, ay nakalimutan pala yung dapat nilang dalhin kasi hindi sila organized mag-isip. Walang aksidente. At kaya natin ito pinag-aaralan mga kapatid because you've got to be the captain of your soul. You've got to hold your destiny in your hands by God's empowerment. You've got to control your thoughts. You've got to watch where your thoughts go. Discipline your mind. Worrying is only a very bad vice, a very bad habit. It could be reversed. Worrying is only a learned habit, and everything that is learned could be unlearned. Dapat lang isip mo, ay, ayan, nagwa-worry na naman ako. I will stop this. Ayan, nagda-doubt na naman ako. I'm going to stop this. Romans 8.6 if our minds are ruled by the Spirit, we will have life and peace. So if you don't have life and peace, you know that, that your mind is not ruled by the Spirit of God. It is ruled by other spirits, perhaps. So think of positive ideas. Ideas that make you happy instead of make you sad. Ideas that encourage you instead of discourage you. Ideas that empower instead of disempower. Papasok ka sa isang lugar, ay, baka hindi ako payagan dito. Alag kayang pumasok dito. Ikaw pa lang, iniisip mo pa lang, hindi ka napapasok. Pero pag sabi mong, papasok ako, bakit hindi? Pasok ka. And very seldom will you be stopped when you have the confidence and when your body language exudes it and when you look the part na pwede kang pumasok. Pero pag meron ka mababa, pagtingin sa sarili mo, lalapit ka sa guard, 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 pwede ba ako dyan? Hindi, ang talsi ka na ngayon. Di ba? Pero pag gumapasok ka, sabi ng guard, excuse me, excuse me, nasa kabupat na. Bakit? Di ba? Mm, tuloy ka na ngayon. Attitude lang yan. Pag ikaw ang nag-volunteer na apihin, body language tells you, no, pwede kang apihin, aapihin ka nga. Sino bang inaapi? Di ba yung mga orko body? Yung mga kagod. Pero pagka smart kang ganyan, no one will dare. Kala nila mayamang ka. Matigas lang pala talaga yung leg mo. It's important. Move to make your physical world realize your thought world. Sabi sa James 2.26, Faith without deeds is dead. So paniwalaan mo yung potential mo. Paniwalaan mo na pwede mangyari. And then work hard. Do what it takes. Back up your faith with your deeds. And God will be so glad to grant you good things. Therefore, choose not to worry. Worry is a choice. Like that boat was being tossed by the waves, Jesus chose to sleep, the disciples chose to worry. Pareho lang naman, nakarating din sila. Merong mga hindi makatulog magdamag, nag-aalala, meron naman natutulog. Pareho lang sila na yung mahal nila sa buhay, wala. 
malayo. It's your choice. First Corinthians 9.27, I keep my body under control and make it my slave. Because sometimes if you don't do that, your body will become your master and your thoughts will be the slave. Here Paul says, my thoughts control my body. My thoughts tell me that I should stay up all night because I'm working on a thesis, my body will follow. My thoughts tell me that I should work hard so that I will improve, my body will follow. Hindi ko susundin ang katawan ko. Sabi niya, I beat and keep my body under my control. Do that with your thoughts. Pagka yung isip niyo lumalayo, uy, lumalayo ka, balik. Your thoughts are wandering, balik. Nagsisimula ka na naman mag-alala, hindi ko yata kaya to, balik mo, kaya ko to. You know, with God in me and with God's empowerment, why can I, what can I not do? Yun naman mga nag achieve hindi naman laging misa, mas magaling sila eh. Mas malakas lang yung faith nila. Mas malakas ang loob. Yan ang lahat-lahat, lakas ng loob. Ano mangyayari kung mahina ang loob? Hati ang loob, di ba? Nagdadalawang loob, wala ka talaga ma-achieve. Pero buo loob, isa loob, di ba? Napakaraming nangyayari. Do the same with your mind. Keep your mind under control by the Spirit. And make it your slave. Therefore, no worries. Review and examine your thoughts, your thought life. What do you mostly worry about? Isa-isahin natin isipin, ano lagi kong inaalala? Talaga bang makakatulong na mag-alala ako? Kung makakatulong, di alalahanin mo. Pero kung wala, isip ka lang ng isip, wala rin naman, control your thoughts. Focus on other things. God doesn't like, want you to worry. God likes to have you to have peace. And when you know that God is in control, that God loves you, and there's nothing good that God will withhold from you, believe, achieve, and you will have what you need in life. What do you worry about? Dear God, we like to ask you to examine our hearts. Help us to see if we are warriors. Kung sobra rin naman kami, Lord, na at ease and at peace sa mata lang, dapat na talaga mag-alala, gisingin mo rin kami. If we're too complacent, if we're too irresponsible, at wag namin, Lord, mapagpalit yung not worrying at yung irresponsible. Teach us when it is correct to be concerned and teach us, Lord, when we should just trust you, just refocus our minds so we can have peace. Turuan mo rin kami, Panginoon, na uh, Maakay, ma-inspire yung mga mahal namin sa buhay ng mga warriors. Teach them, O oh Lord, and teach us how to reassure them that they should not be worrying needlessly. Magbulay-bulay tayo mga kapatid, lagi natin ginagawa yan. We should always apply God's word in our daily life. What are you worried about? Will it help to worry? If it won't, then stop worrying and just do what you can. Lord, as we are silent before you, we ask you to examine our hearts, examine our lives. Show us if we are needless warriors. Forgive us, Lord, because worrying is lack of faith. Teach us to focus on you. Teach us to do what we can and to leave the rest up to you. Let's ponder these words a while and think how we might be free from needless worry.